got the man without whom the acid jazz explosion would never have happened. Roy Ayers. Indeed, it's all down to you. Uh, I like that terminology, <laughs> acid jazz, you know? <laughs> so what's your title there? <laughs> I don't know. I call it jazz fusion, but I, 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 can, I, I allow anybody to say anything they want to say. It's uh -huh. cool. I think you've got the Godfather of Soul. You should be, like, I guess, the author of acid jazz. Well, that's my man. <laughs> James Brown, I like him. So it's, I, I think he is really, really the Godfather of Soul. Yeah. But of course, he gave us the cologne that name himself, you know? Mm -hmm. He did. <laughs> now, you just said earlier that you sort of spent uh, quite, a, quite a few weeks now sort of like on the festival circuit abroad. And yeah, I'm, actually, I'm kind of tired, but uh, I, when I saw you, I pepped up, you know. Oh, uh, chum! I, yes, I got real energetic, <laughs> and I said, she's lovely. I said, this is going to be a lovely interview. You know? <laughs> it oh, may yeah, not be I long, but it's going to be lovely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, really nice to meet you. Oh, I'm thinking, you too. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I love some of your stuff. Everybody loves the sunshine. It's a, it's a complete favorite of mine as well. That's one of my favorites, too, of course. It's, uh, I was inspired by my upbringing in Los Angeles, California, when there was no smog. And uh, that's what re really inspired me to compose that song. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. And they're sampling it like everything, you know, which is good. So how have the Europeans taken to your performances? Uh, very well, very well. Uh, they're getting better. They're almost getting as well as the Brits. Uh, of course, the Brits leave the, uh, they're number one. Uh, they're <laughs> my number one fans. They are. It's my best market. England, in the world. You I'm said serious. it in every market. Oh, actually, I love the I'm really serious. I'm really, <laughs> yeah. I'm really serious. Uh, UK is my best market. I mean, I really, I have a great consistency here, mm -hmm. and I do very well here all the time. And it, it's, uh, it's based on the fans and maybe my consistency too, but it's a great market for me. Do you think that's because it actually got to grips with this jazz funk explosion, which everyone said was going to happen, and then suddenly we were in it, and it seems that we're still carrying on? Yeah, it's still, still, it's still going on, you know, and the things are still happening, and uh, the music keeps turning over from here, and it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, actually. You know, I've got a new generation of people listening to my music, sampling my music, doing all kind of things, and it's, uh, it's, it's good. Uh -huh. I don't feel like I'm 90. <laughs> Aside from the financial aspect, which of course must come into the sampling stuff, I mean, mm -hmm. do you mind being sampled or do you think it's, it's an honor at work? I don't mind at all. I think a lot of these artists don't write music themselves. So um, they, they pick mine, you know, they pick other people's music as well, but they pick mine and in almost every case it's been a hit. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I mean, Sunshine's been a hit maybe five times. Yeah. You know, that's incredible. And Mary J. Blige is, of course, probably the biggest selling artist that, uh, that, sat, that has sampled me. Mm -hmm. And this, that's incredible. You right. know? So, you know, you don't think that these things are going to happen. You know, you, I didn't plan in the 70s to be even sampled, you know, just, and all of a sudden it starts happening on, on massive levels, you know. Right. So it's great. I mean, that's, it's wonderful. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that they, they picked my music. So you got a new album out at the moment. I suppose because of, of the reaction that you, your previous work has been getting, did that make you think for the new album, I've got to give them something really good that in 10 years' time they can still be sampling from? You know, I, I, well, I didn't think that way, but I, I did think that I have to really try to do something different. The great thing about the deal with uh, Groove Town Records, which is BMG, uh, is that they uh, allowed me to ha have complete and total creative control. And that was something that was very difficult, and quite often with many artists, it's very difficult to get, mm -hmm. even if you're established. So that's why I haven't really been on a major la la label all this time because of that. Right. So uh, having creative control, it, you're, getting, you're getting exactly what Roy has wanted to deliver to the people. And it's something you've only got recently. Exactly. So yeah. what happened on the No, 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 all the other time I had it before. Right. But I'm talking about I haven't had it in, uh, when we were no negotiating for other deals. Right. I was unable to get it, so now I've, I'm, I'm able to get it, which is great. Uh -huh. So did you collaborate with lots of people for this album? Or? Um, not too many. Most of the guys in my band are on it. Um, and uh, I used a um, um, fantastic young lady uh, who resides here in London. Her name is Wumi. Uh -huh. um, you might know her. She's a dancer. She's also on my new video, Nasty. Um, uh, but uh, Wumi um, Olaya, she's from Nigeria, grew up in England, and she's uh, fantastic. She's on two compositions, one called Fantasy and one called I Like It Like That. It's a nice concept, it's different. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very thrilled with the record, and uh, you know, I, I think things are going to happen with it. People are going to like it. I like, I like it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think the jazz funk explosion is going, then? I, I don't know exactly where it's going, but I know that the music will continue. I think that more jazz, more improvisation is going to be happening on top of R&B type of uh, rhythms. Mm -hmm. I think the more jazz artists are going to start getting into it more so. I think that it might, uh, it might uh, take over if, if the songs are really strong, even more just improvisation and, and of course, uh, melodies are going to be stronger. I think a lot of jazz musicians are going to cross over into the jazz fusion area, mm -hmm. you know. And, and um, 
I, I, don't, I don't think that the straight ahead swing is going to be as strong as it used to be. But I think that the jazz fusion is the new era that's going to happen. It's going to be very powerful. Right. You've done a lot of a lot of work with Guru as well, haven't you? I did some work with Guru, right? Uh -huh. That's right. It was nice working with him. Myself and uh, Donald Byrd, we went out on tour with him. We toured Europe and, and the United States. And I worked with a group called The Roots, which was really nice on Proceed, which was uh, the Red Hot and Cool mm -hmm. CD, which was nice. You know, and I, I thought that was nice working with these brothers. And these are very conscious young men. I mean, they could be my son, you know, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great, you know. And I think that can kind of connect you know, the generation gaps, you know, when it, whereas a lot of adults my age might not understand what a lot of the young hip hoppers are doing, you know, but these are in fact our sons, so it's important that we relate to them yeah. and that they relate to us. So if you can fuse jazz with hip hop, that's good. So is there a young pretender there on the scene then? Sorry? Is there a young pretender on the scene? Who do you think sort of is going to be, you know, mm, the I don't next know. Roy Ayers? I mean, there, there are a lot of young vibists out here. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a vibe man, and, and I'm seeing someone. I, I'm sure that somebody's going to come up and, and make a lot of noise and, 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 and be there to keep the tradition going. Mm -hmm. You know, just like uh, when I came up, uh, uh, there was Lionel Hampton, and he's still around. You know, he had a stroke recently, but he's still around. We're getting ready to play a great benefit for him at Kennedy Center in New York. Right. I, I mean, in uh, D.C. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it always evolves. New people, new faces always come, new concepts, new styles. That's what keeps the world going. That's what keeps us all working. Right. So you're going to be playing any dates over here? Uh, yes, I'll be here at uh, Dingwalls. Mm -hmm. You know that. I'm here at Ding Dingwalls uh, tonight. and uh, Well, not tonight, but it, we're soon. here soon. three days. Yeah, <laughs> we're here at Dingwalls soon. And of course, I'll be at Ronnie Scott's for three weeks. Right. Yeah. You like Ronnie Scott's? Is I love it. it. I love it. You know, because the dance crowd, they're all standing over in this section over here. And sometimes they are in just in, in, uh, in, out in the audience. And then the rest of the audience is sitting down. And you got all these people standing over here screaming and dancing and grouping. And over here they're sitting down. And eventually everybody gets up and turns into a really big, happy family. Yeah. But they seem to get more of a music crowd, don't you, at Ronnie Scott's? It's like, you know, Very much we so. love jazz and we know jazz. That's you right. Know. And they, they, they understand it, you know, which I, I think is uh, very important. Do you That's prefer true. playing to those sort of people than to you know people who just think, oh, okay, this sounds like a, it might be a good gig, you know? Or do you? I mean, do I you like playing to? I like the variety because um, you know, I find that variety is the spice of life, and uh, I find that uh, when you get people that react one way or the other way, whatever, I just entertain them. But by the way, that's what I've evolved into from a jazz musician to an entertainer. Oh, I see. So I'm, 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 I am. I mean, I, I'm funny. I have fun. I have fun. I, I sing songs like Poo Poo La La. You know, and uh, I, I have it, it's getting better for me because I'm I'm enjoying it even more so mm -hmm. than than in the past, and which is good. And are you one of those artists that would therefore change a set every night to make sure it doesn't get stale, or would you just right? I'm always thinking of something new or something different, something exciting. And you know, the uh, personalities over here, the, the Brits have a great sense of humor, and and they understand and relate to you know humor. And, and of course, I get into it and make. It makes even it more pleasant. I like to surprise my band with new, you know, new things I say on stage because, you know, if you're doing something all the time, they know the routine, mm -hmm. and I change up and say something new, and they go, oh, and, you know, you get a laugh from your band. That's great. You know, you really sure. kick it, you know. Sure. So I have fun, and that's the name of the game, to have fun while we're on this planet and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Did you ever have a, you know, just, like, leave the set list alone and just jam? Uh, that happens occasionally. Uh -huh. I mean, that does happen. So, I mean, it's a... Uh, uh, I'm very spontaneous like that, so when, when that happens, it, uh, it sometimes surprises me because things like that happen. Like one night, uh, I was recording at Ronnie Scott's and uh, the Cookie Crew came in, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I brought them up on stage, and, and I forgot we were recording, and they were contracted to another label, but we, they came on stage and did Love Will Bring Us Back Together, and it, it came out to be hilarious, you know, and mm -hmm. we used it on the record. Which was nice. So things like that happen, you know. Which is, which is, uh, I guess, the Royer's uh, story. <laughs> Indeed. <of sorts. laughs> Set to continue in this country. So if you are going to a Royer's gig, who knows what might happen? Anyway, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. We will have more details on Roy's dates in Thursday night's gig guide here on the bridge. And we continue the music now with a contemporary of Roy's, also drawing from the jazz route. This is Gil Scott Heron. Thanks again.